And if you really want to tap in to and unlock your potential Mm -hmm. and you want your business to thrive and you want more freedom through your business, we've got to talk leadership. So from from that angle, it's like I I want to think of all the things our people struggle with and then show them how by focusing on daily, focusing on putting into practice mental resilience, managing their mind in every situation. You know, you got a nasty comment on that post you just put up (laughs) and you're sitting there stewing over it. That's a perfect moment to practice managing your mind. Hey, you're listening to the Luminary Leadership Podcast and I'm your host, Liz. This is the space where we equip overwhelmed entrepreneurs to become the confident, visionary leader their business, team, family, legacy need to win. After working with countless entrepreneurs over the last decade plus, I've noticed this theme. No matter the level of success they achieved, and I've worked with some incredibly successful business owners, they get to this point where they're asking, now what? You know, what am I being called to next? What does next look like? How do I get there? If you're listening to this, you get it. You're craving more impact, and you want to feel less frantic and in the weeds of your day-to-day roles and instead lead with that vision and that peace and that intention and that clarity. You wanna wake up each morning with that clarity and vision and the time and the margin to do what you love in your business and in your life with your family. This show is where industry leaders come to grow into their next level of achievement and purpose and impact and legacy. Success in business and true legacy at home. Get ready because we both know you don't just need another strategy. It is time for your breakthrough. Welcome to the Barn Studio. I love the Barn Studio. I think it's amazing. I'm excited to have you. I'm excited to be here. And this is a conversation that has been so long coming. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, each of us have spent years in our wheelhouse and reading and researching and working with people. And um, I, I've i always wanted to sit down and find out how on earth mental resilience and your leadership and leadership knowledge and understanding, how we can marry those and just give the entrepreneurs that we work with more bang for their buck, more understanding. I think we saw it in action this week. We with, did. With you here. So this week we had our high performers and our entrepreneurs come out to the farm for our incubator mastermind. And you and Jeff coming as our special guest second year in a row. I don't think we'll ever want to have anybody else. <laughs> and I what was it. so cool was, you know, oftentimes entrepreneurs come to the table for a business-like event yeah. with a heart for uh, strategy. Yeah, They want to know, and I'm totally guilty of this. They want to know what's the next step to get me to where I want to go. Like, what's the next thing I have to do to make more money or to go faster or to have more of my time back or to be visible in the market or whatever it might be. And I've always taken the angle of like, well, you you are capped by your leadership. So a strategy is only going to take you as far as your leadership is you're equipped for that strategy as a leader. Mm -hmm. And I think what you showed me these last few days is there's a missing piece that I wasn't applying because you can understand leadership principles and you can understand even leadership strategies or work on leadership development, but you're then capped as a leader based Mm -hmm. on your mental resilience. So to me, this was like the up-leveling for entrepreneurs where I was only taking them so far. And then we, it was, to me, I saw it visually as, oh, you came in and you handed them the key to the attic that they couldn't get access to. It was like the, the, the final piece. And it was neat because oftentimes our strategy sessions or our conversations at these types of events are around, you know, marketing strategies and things like that. And you're up there talking about feelings and emotions and how they <laughs> think of things. And you could see some of them getting a little skittish at first and then they all kind of just melted into their seat and they're like, oh, okay, I get it. Like I need this piece. 
And it was amazing to watch. The combination, I mean, I've obviously followed you for years and we've spent over a decade having conversations about leadership. And I've I've followed your, I mean, you are the one who talked me into being the entrepreneur and opening my own thing. And so there's a lot of obvious respect there about that. But it's been so interesting going through this weekend with you and realizing that, yes, mental resilience, this ability to manage your mind and regulate your emotions is at the heart of your leadership principles that I've been uh, sitting at your feet learning from for years. They're married. I didn't even realize mm-hmm. how how married they are mm-hmm. until going through this um, this week with with your people. Which oh my goodness, I fell in love with your people. Yeah, they're good people. Yeah, Luminary <laughs> Leadership. Um, what a crew! What mm-hmm. a crew! So, what do you think? When you think of uh, high performers or maybe threes on the Enneagram, what would be another Enneagram number that's kind of built that way? That's like a go, go, go type and high achiever. Yeah. Well, your your ones and your threes, um, you know, the ones are more the rule followers that they are. But what's interesting about something that people don't understand that I like to insert Mm -hmm. because this is a common misconception. And I have this a lot. You know, I'm an authorized uh, disc Yes. Server size service a lot of people with disc. And they'll say, Oh, you know, I'm a I'm a C or I'm an S, so I'm not a CEO or a go getter type. And the truth of the matter is, is that the C's and the S's make some of the best CEOs too. And they can be strong leaders and go getters. It just looks differently. Mm-hmm. You have to know how to leverage. You have your to gifts. know how to leverage it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when you think about those types that really there's no off switch when it comes to achievement and pursuit of growth and success, do you find that they struggle a little bit more to acknowledge and ultimately tap into the emotional side of seeing the value in something like mental resilience? And I love how you say managing your mind because that to me is very appealing as an achiever. If you were to say, you need to get in touch with your emotions. I'd be like, yeah. ew, no, thank you. <laughs> That's a turn off to me, although it's I true. Love it. <laughs> but when you say yeah. manage your mind, I see an ROI on that, yeah. which is how I view things, right? And mm-hmm. I know that a lot of my clients are that way too. Yeah. So do you find that people that are like that struggle a little bit more to embrace some of the things you're bringing to the table? Oh, absolutely. Um, what is... I, I love the breakthroughs that I have with high achievers like you. Mm. You know, we've had it our only own took time. like nine years. Yeah, we've had our time together. <laughs> Beating me over the head. And the breakthrough that I see that that is exciting is what a lot of high achievers forget or they're not aware of is that that subconscious that we have mm-hmm. is a tape that is running 24-7. That's so true. So just because we are not aware of what we're acting out of, right, doesn't mean that we're not acting out of it. Mm -hmm. And so that lack of awareness, um, although at times comforting because you're, you're not having to revisit painful stories or you're not having to look at part of the negative self talk and where it came from, its origin, although that can be nice to use achievement as a band aid at times. Mm It is limiting. Mm-hmm. And and I love whenever a breakthrough comes to say, do you want to be limitless? Do you want to have an area where you can have a breakthrough and you can actually have more ability to manage those incoming thoughts that are then creating that chemistry that are, you know, the chemistry is the emotions. Mm-hmm. So do we want to go back and have a lot more control and High achievers or performers want to say, heck, yeah, give me the control. Mm -hmm. You know, let me learn how to have control over my incoming thoughts. Great. I look at it because I see a lot of, you know, people that I work with will embrace the idea of, okay, strategy is only going to get me so far. I need to become a leader. I need to uh, put as much investment of time, energy, focus into who I'm becoming as much as what I'm doing and what I'm pursuing. Yeah. And they embrace that. 
But then I look at it like when you come in and you say, okay, now, but we're going to do leadership through the lens of mental resilience. We're going to help you as a leader manage your mind and uh, control your emotions and understand your chemistry so that you can have that self-awareness because that's a huge leadership principle. You can't be a leader without true self-awareness. You can be a, you know, maybe a self-proclaimed one, but not a a true leader that's going to make the impact that a leader would make. It's almost like someone who thinks they have really good vision and then they go get fitted for glasses for the first time and they see an HD and it's like, whoa, I've been missing the detail. I've been missing the opportunities because I couldn't quite see it. And I think the tough thing about both of the things we have chosen to focus on (laughs) in our career Mm -hmm. is that people do want the quick fix. They want the thing that you can come in teach them the marketing strategy that makes them an extra $100,000. You can show them the sales tool that's going to benefit their business where we're saying, hey, we're going to unearth some stuff. It's going to be painful. It's going to challenge you. You're also going to have to look in the mirror a lot and take ownership Mm -hmm. of your life and yourself and your past and your future and all those things. And it's the long game. It's not uh, do this and you will... Ha- permanently have mental resilience it's a practice right yeah. the same thing with leadership it's not you don't become a leader you practice leadership yeah. so i love that practice leadership maybe we've chosen the wrong career path people probably will buy mm. this other stuff a lot <laughs> a lot more likely to purchase it but i think it's so beautiful because That's to true. me those are the people that they are able to access yeah what we both talk about which is their potential Absolutely. And their peace, Mm -hmm. you know, this balance of peace and potential. Mm -hmm. And you are you're so spot on whenever we talk about and and the entrepreneurs that come wanting the quick fix. Yeah. So I've had lots of conversations to say, I'm not a psychotherapist. Mm -hmm. Talk talk therapy is incredibly effective. We've seen it effective for trauma. But if you're truly wanting to gain mental resilience, This means you're going to be looking for how to manage that mind and how to regulate your emotions in any given circumstance at any moment in time, which means it is a muscle and you're going to work for that. Mm -hmm. It is daily work to gain mental resilience and to sustain it. And I think that's what you've talked a lot about with leadership Mm -hmm. is sustainability. It's not a one and done. Right. Right. And so, you know, a question that I've had for you all all week, um, kind of working with you and working with your people, which has been amazing, has been, so I know the value of attachment, Mm -hmm. right? Um, Both personally and professionally. I know that by me being able to be my own best friend and being able to be that cheerleader and champion and have that compassion for myself and those check-ins every morning, I know the value of my state of being. Mm -hmm. I know that it really helps me to be more authentic in the way that I show up. I also know that it gives me a lot of peace knowing that I'm walking alongside my best friend. Right. Tell me kind of how how could I help leaders? Mm-hmm. How Where would that conversation, that understanding, um, add value to somebody that's coming to you saying, I'd really like to lead better? Mm. I think... I, I witnessed it the last few days with you working with our group was through your story. Mm. You know, you always tell me that, that, you know, when you embrace your story and yes. that's where the limitless possibility comes in. And I think in them hearing the different vulnerable elements of your story mm-hmm. and, and how you had experienced a time where you hadn't yet understood mental like how to be mental re- mentally resilient and how to truly become a leader i think it captures us because we see you and we respect you and we know what you've done and i think they need the example of the evidence of someone else having done it and it being fruitful in their lives and i think that's what yeah. people want i i watched you speak and I've seen you speak multiple times over many years and there was something different this time Mm. that I noticed where it was another level of Monica it was like Mm. a 
not in a like a highfalutin way, in a, whoa, she is so confident and comfortable in her own skin and so mm-hmm. resilient. That's a perfect word. And I think just by embodying that and just being and just having put it into practice all those years yeah. and then getting up in front of us and saying and showing that naturally and being willing to share your story, we can see that natural through line of like, oh, this is something that's going to get us to an access point that we can't unlock ourselves yet yeah. with just strategies. And so I think I think there has to be some education around it. Yeah, I, I do agree with that. that. There's some education that needs to happen. You know, because people, I, I'm trying to think mm-hmm. of the words that might resonate most. Like, mm-hmm. you say mentally resilient. Other people might say, I'm struggling with my confidence. Right. Right. Or right. I have imposter syndrome. So I would look at mental resilience and say, what are all the kind of trickle down other things that could be kind of connected to it, that if you had mental resilience, you would alleviate some of these other pains and then start there because it's almost like you have to speak our language where we're at. We might not Mm -hmm. be ready to to talk about mental resilience or managing our mind, but we sure as heck can talk about how painful it is when we get rejected in a sales call. You know what I mean? So like maybe targeting Mm-hmm. the the exact areas where our entrepreneurs are struggling because I know that my clients and other people and peers, yeah, there are elements of entrepreneurship that just straight up suck. Like it just sucks when you're on a yeah. sales call and you get that rejection and then it creates that pit in your stomach or mm-hmm. you have an experience with a team member that something goes awry and you feel betrayed and now you have this emotion sitting with you and you just can't get past it. And then you're bruised and you're wounded going into the next hire and you're afraid to hire. And you, so you hire from, you don't hire from a place of leadership because you're already putting up walls and trying to protect yourself from a past. So I would love almost like mental resilience tactics for each of those specific strategies and then educate us that it's it's a bigger thing, right? Yeah. I do that a lot with leadership where it's mm-hmm. like, for years I tried to market leadership. Like, oh, you need to become a leader. And people are, yeah. aren't sitting there Googling, how do I become a leader? Right. And it felt like this gap. I'm like, why don't these people understand that this yeah. is what they need? And yeah. I realized, oh, wait, I have to I have to speak to them with what they're looking for. So what are the things they're struggling with because they lack leadership? Oh, I love that. You know what I mean? Like oh, I love that. Turnover in their team, yeah. feeling like they're making the wrong hires all the time, having yeah. profit ceilings in their business, um, setting goals and not achieving them, setting mm-hmm. goals, achieving them, and glossing right over them and not feeling any fulfillment in the process. These are yeah. all things that are pretty universal to many entrepreneurs. Imposter syndrome, all those things. Right. And they're sitting there thinking, oh, well, I didn't have a good enough marketing strategy or I didn't have yeah. a strong funnel or, you know, I could I, my the, the business coach I hired last year led me astray and pointing fingers, whatever it yeah. might be. And I'm able to meet them there and say, oh, you're struggling with that and kind of take their hand and, and pull back the curtain and be like, you think it's this, yeah, but it's really this. And if you really want to tap in to and unlock your potential mm-hmm. and you want your business to thrive. And you want more freedom through your business. We've got to talk leadership. So from from that angle, it's like I I want to think of all the things our people struggle with and then show them how by focusing on daily, focusing on putting into practice mental resilience, managing their mind in every situation. You know, you got a nasty comment on that post you just put up (laughs) and you're sitting there stewing over it. That's yeah. a perfect moment to practice managing your mind. And that, you know, one of the things that we could kind of even dive into that is a pain point that I know that we both have seen in our entrepreneurs that we work with is so my approach to an entrepreneur that's coming to me with severe anxiety, hmm. right? I'm I'm doing the thread back to why are, where is the anxiety coming from? Mm-hmm. Let's Where's the origin? How far can we go back? Right. And oftentimes it leads to conversations like um, I, I'm not good enough. Mm-hmm. I'm not good enough. I know I I had I have a history of not being good enough. I'm not good enough. You know, and then, of course, my response is good enough for what? Right. Not good enough for what? Because every time we have uncertainty, it is going to breed anxiety. So unless we start to specify. But what's interesting is I can do it from 
an emotionality or from a thought processes side, I would love to hear when they come to you mm-hmm. and they say, Liz, I'm struggling with anxiety. Mm-hmm. What would your approach be for leadership? Because I, I always love your your take. I think it's so interesting now that we're collaborating more yeah. to realize the common ways that we are supporting our people because anxiety is huge for entrepreneurs. I mean, you just, right. but we talked about this the other day. To me, they say, I feel overwhelmed. Ah, okay. Often, yeah. They, they yeah. don't often say anxiety to me. They will say overwhelmed. Yeah. And then I can talk to them about how, to me, overwhelm is kind of a mask for something else. And really getting to yeah. the root. Uh, I, I, I think you go, you're, you're, from what I understand, you go back, right? You're like, I'm, right. they say, I'm anxious. And you say, let's go back and figure out where this is stemming from. Yeah. They say, I'm overwhelmed. And I'll say, okay, where are we trying to go? Oh, so what I think I is so this. cool is yeah. those two together yeah. is an unstoppable duo for that person. Yeah. When they can have a clear understanding of where their crap is coming from. Yeah. At the same time that they have their eyes on the horizon of where yeah. where they're called to go and why they're working so hard for this thing and why, you yeah. know, they're putting in all the hours and they're allowing all these things to come on their plate because they're yeah. trying to do something. What is it? And are we aligned? Like, are we making the right choice? Are we chasing the right things? Yes. When you can have those two perspectives from that central vantage point of what feels like overwhelm or anxiety. Right. Now, all of a sudden, you have the ability to unearth where the problem's coming from, get to the root cause, yeah. and then figure out the plan going forward. What a comprehensive approach mm. to really helping an entrepreneur in the personal and professional. I mean, to me, this description right here that we've just described is at the heart of your ideas that you have for luminary leadership and the value that they're adding to um, to your clients. Mm. I can, I see it. I love that. And I want more of you um, in the leadership because I'm really starting to understand the correlation and that there are things because of the lack of leadership Mm. is where the pain point is. And if I can get more resources for my clients to help them in their leadership journey, it will alleviate some of these um, pain points that they're having with emotional and mental health. Yeah, ditto, because I see, I don't feel equipped to help them with the going back stuff, but I understand that it has to happen. You know what I mean? And to me, it's, this is me. I can only speak on behalf of myself and maybe the clients that have, you know, opened up to me over the, the years is sometimes in order to go back and to do that deep work that can be kind of painful or difficult or confusing. Yeah. I have to know why I'm doing it. And that's where the vision comes in for me. Right. Right. So a a leader has to be visionary. Right. I have a lot of people that'll say, I'm just not the visionary type. Like they're still a leader in their business or they, you know, a founder or CEO or a small business owner or whatever. And it's kind of not an option. You have, you're in Mm -hmm. business because you have some kind of vision. You started this, even if that vision felt, might feel small in comparison to, you know, Elon Musk putting people in space like yeah. it's still a vision it still was something even if it's just you know providing for your family and in, in some small way and in order for me to have the desire to unearth all the stuff that you've helped me with over the years mm-hmm. I had to know where I was trying to go and why it was so valuable to do that work because yeah. I started to understand that if I understand and embody and embrace mental resilience, then I can access what I I really, really want. I'm not just doing it because mental resilience is good. I'm doing it because I have a calling on my heart. I have one shot at this life. I have one opportunity to tap into that potential. I have uh, have children that I want to model this for. And I, to your point, I don't, I also don't want to access that thing I really feel called to at the expense of my peace. Yes. Because that affects yes. everybody yeah. in my circle that I care yeah. so deeply about. Why would I want to, you know, yeah. influence negatively? So I, as as that visionary, found it easier 
to embrace yeah. the mental resilience stuff and to see the true value in it because I knew I was called to something and I couldn't yeah. get that key until I and that, did that work. You know, it's funny. Until we've sat here and had this moment, I've I've never realized. Of course, I've realized when when anyone compliments me by saying, oh, my goodness, are you two sisters? I'm always like, <laughs> oh, my gosh, that's amazing. <laughs> but the commonality that we have, the, the core thing we have in common, I don't think I've recognized until this moment. And that is we both love to build mm-hmm. and we love to help people build. It's so true. We have talked about this before because there have been times in my yeah. life where I've had really good things going, like yeah. things were humming. And I'd be like, Monica, why do I not want to do this? And you're like, because you're not a maintainer. You love to build. You're a builder. You've yeah. already built the thing, and now you're ready to go build the next thing. It's so, yeah. so true. But And so what's crazy is I'm thinking of on my side when I think of, um, you know, mental and emotional health. And I think of how that blueprint that we create in our early childhood, you know, up until we're about seven or eight, mm-hmm. our, our environment and the adults in our lives are truth tellers. Right. And so we are creating that blueprint. And we will duplicate that blueprint of beliefs, needs, and values. We'll, we'll keep duplicating it throughout our lives. Mm. Now, we might have a house that one is decorated country French. Maybe the next season it's, it's you know, modern. But we're still duplicating the core blueprint unless we challenge it or take it back to an architect. Mm-hmm. So what's interesting is what I love to do is help people deconstruct the part of their blueprint that is not getting them the house that they want. Mm-hmm. That's right? so perfectly said because I saw you do that for people this week. Yeah, The light bulbs were just going. Even the guys in the room were like, wait. <laughs> There's I'm nothing really more satisfying I, when I see men with tears in their I eyes. Know. There's nothing more. When it is hitting home and they're recognizing, I was hurt. Mm-hmm. And I can make this crooked path straight, and it's going to get me where I want to go. Like, oh, that is, talk about feeling just fulfilled. So when when we talk about, you know, how I was saying, meeting them where they're at, of the the things they're struggling with because they need mental resilience, what are some of the transformations entrepreneurs can expect— when they make this a practice? Like what have you seen happen in the lives of entrepreneurs and achievers when they say, fine, Monica, I'll do it. (laughs) I'll embrace this whole theory of yours, even though I want to go, you know, work on my to-do list and make my sales calls and do all the things. What becomes available to them? Let's start with from a business sense, and then we'll go into a a personal sense. Well, first of all, from a business sense, who doesn't want to do life with their very best friend? Mm. Who doesn't, right? Most of the entrepreneurs that that I meet, within that first one or two sessions that we, we're talking, I find out that they are mean to themselves. So true. So hateful, right? Mm-hmm. And And I point out, Do you recognize this is emotional abuse? When we demean or diminish another human being, it is emotional abuse. And you have a part of you, which is this internal family systems therapy. You know, there's a lot of of perks to having a psychology master's because I can recognize these things. Um, You are abusing yourself. Yeah. And you're going through life with an abuser. And wouldn't you rather go through these valleys and these mountains with your very best friend in there encouraging you, meeting you in those vulnerable places, being kind to you? Mm. So people um, who often run toward achievement can often be running from something. And what I like to do is I like to connect them to themselves to say you have the ability to self-protect, self-respect self-trust and self-love and you're going you started with you you're going to die with you Mm -hmm. and so how wonderful to do life with a partner within you that loves you i've never thought about it that way ever no just like Mm -hmm. a quality of life opportunity think how much more you can achieve yeah 
You know, I, the joke, I wish I had Monica in my back pocket. Yeah. What if you had even better, someone who knew you so well and yet loved you and championed you mm-hmm. and was with you 24-7? What a gift. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's something that I, I really enjoy just watching because what that does is that it eases anxiety. We know that. Mm-hmm. It helps in relationships because the boundary difficulties that we see, the people pleasing, the being all things to all people, you know, most of the entrepreneurs that I've worked with over the years, that is a theme. They believe they I'm supposed to be all things to all people. And that's just so self-sacrificing. You've taught me to overcome that. Or yeah. to work on overcoming that. Right. <laughs> because who's not being protected? Mm-hmm. When when we give everything, right, who we're not giving to is ourselves. That's not sustainable. That model is a burnout model. Right. Lots of great research on burnout for entrepreneurs. Yeah. Right. I have some entrepreneurs. I think I'm just depressed or I think I'm just apathy has taken over. And it's like, let's talk about burnout. Let's talk about you've been all things to all people. Right. Let's talk about what do you give to yourself? How are you caring for yourself? Because sustainability is in our in our self-care. And I'm not talking about a bubble bath. Right. I'm talking about connecting with ourself every day. I still, I wake up every day and I ask myself, Monica, where are you comfortable and where are you uncomfortable today? Right. And what can you do about your uncomfortable? And how can I celebrate with you you're comfortable? And that gets me really in alignment with Where's my head? Right. Right. Mm. Um, And keeping ourselves more in our head gets us away from operating just out of our chemistry. Totally. Because our chemistry is just that that pumping of emotions, which for me is typically fear based. If I'm not if I'm not doing my mental resilience workouts every morning, I can immediately go to that default of fear. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, I'm going to be rejected. So I got to be all things to all people. Oh, my goodness. Somebody's going to see a typo in one of my blogs. And before you know it, I'm going to be a failure. I'm going to get the failure label or, oh, she's not into excellence. You know, I mean, we have this myriad of things that we can I I can assault myself so quickly. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's easy for me to say that I know this stuff works because if I didn't do it, I would be such a hot mess. Yeah. Such a hot mess. We wouldn't be having this conversation. Right. You know, mm-hmm. we wouldn't be having this conversation. I, I would live small. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the evil we're fighting against. Is oh, yeah. Good people living small because they aren't willing or aren't even not, not willing. They're not aware that this is the work that will set them free. Yes. Yeah. And, and the payoff, that it does have a payoff. Yes. Now, what I get excited about is more conversations between us. Because I believe there's a bigger payoff than even I'm realizing that is connected to your understanding of leadership. You know, you talk about how uncertainty creates anxiety, right? Absolutely. And I always talk about how lack of clarity creates uncertainty, which makes it impossible to have a vision. Yeah. And no vision we perish, right? Right. So it is all so connected. Yeah. Isn't it amazing how that specificity, right, Mm -hmm. in our mind and emotions is as important as in our strategy? You know? So true. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm so blown away by that. I mean, I'm really blown away by um, when we don't take the time to define, we really, uh, we limit ourselves, Mm -hmm. right? Big time. So I I see it in the mind and I see it, um, I see it in the way that people behave, right? That they limit themselves because their mindset, like we've talked about is small, right? Right. And a lot of the small is because they didn't step out and write the I want statements. Mm-hmm. I want these things, right? And then detail how they were going to get there. Right. I, I'm so excited to talk more and have these conversations regarding that type of clarity and and marrying the defining the, the mind alongside the strategy 
and in your thoughts on leadership, because I can really see the benefits that, that the entrepreneurs that we work with, that they would get out of having the comprehensive view of both of us coming together and really just, um, it's almost like we're wrestling it out, <laughs> you know? Okay, what do you know? Right. <laughs> let's let's just get it out and put it together. I want to bring real life examples to the table in future conversations because yeah, we, we have so many parallels of the types of people that we serve. We've even overlapped on the actual people that we've served. Yes. And gotten to support them in those two categories. It's like building resilient leaders. It's these people that are truly unlocked in their potential yes. while they're able to obtain that peace that we all feel like is elusive as entrepreneurs sometimes. Yes. And I want to dissect that with you and give these entrepreneurs the gift of a, a level of freedom that they've that they never even knew was possible. Yeah, I I agree. And I'm really excited about us going down this road together. And of course, I adore you. So it's easy for me to want to have these conversations with you all the time. But I, I, I'm i excited about the, the value mm. and what we're going to be really helping each other with, helping our clients with, and hopefully helping anybody who's listening or watching mm. and um, is just interested in how can I live more to my full peace and potential simultaneously. Right. Not having to give up one or the other, because we've talked about that over the years, that we've watched clients that we've both worked with that have had no peace and they have been rocking it with their potential. Right. Right. Which was a lose situation for exactly. them. Uh, had a time limit. Mm -hmm. And then we watched those that have been in great peace, but <laughs> boy, not could not much. move the needle. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. So it's exciting for us to, to really have the conversations and see. And I like the case study idea of us pulling out some entrepreneurs that we're working with and, and telling the story of uh, yeah. how is this, this research that we're doing together, this kind of putting together, drafting some ideas mm -hmm. to, to give people more. I love that. Yeah. So fellow builder, let's do it. I'm in. Cheers to that. Cheers. I hope today's episode gave you what you needed. If it spoke to you, please leave us a review and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next powerful episode. And I know it's so cliche to ask for a review. It always feels weird asking for one, but you guys, that makes a huge impact on the show. We read every one of them and it helps us get incredible guests to serve you. Don't be shy. I love connecting with our listeners. You can follow along on Instagram when I'm on there at Eliz Hartke. And if there's a topic or a question or guest you have for us, reach out, share your thoughts. You can connect at marketing at luminaryleadershipco.com. And we do this for you. So the more you tell us, the more we can serve you. Thanks for spending some time with me. I really do appreciate you. Tune in next week to keep building your legacy and becoming the confident visionary leader you are meant to be.